What can you change about your training today? What can you do to avoid burnout and setbacks that come with short-sighted focus on quick results? Well, you can start to embrace these key functional bodybuilding philosophies in your training. In today's episode, I teach you how to build wings. Welcome back to another episode of Building Functional Muscle. I'm Marcus Philly, Functional Bodybuilding, and in part three of this series today, we are going to be hitting a back workout. That's right, build the lats, build the upper back, build the traps, make the back of your upper body pop and strong. To hit the upper body with a back focus, I am going to be reviewing yet another functional bodybuilding training format that we love right here. Hey, if you're new to the channel, functional bodybuilding, that is all of the methods that I have brought together from my 20 years of training experience that places equal emphasis on looking good and moving well. Back in my early 20s, I played the look good game for years. Then in my later 20s and into my 30s, I transitioned to playing the performance game in something called CrossFit. And now in my mid to late 30s, approaching my 40s, I truly care about both. What I'm striving for these days is to find training solutions that combine look good and move well. So it allows those of you who love training as much as I do to keep it as part of your life for decades to come. Just about everyone I know that comes to the gym wants to look better and be stronger. The problem is that many people pursue those two goals at the expense of their long-term physical health. What gets them results this month? It doesn't necessarily set them up for long-term success. Your body starts to look better, you start leaning out, muscle starts to pack on, strength numbers go up, and then bam! Setback, injury, burnout, plateau. Now, without a doubt, diet and recovery practices are going to play an important role in whether or not your body breaks down or if it builds back up, or whether your progress is long-term or short-term. I'll save that for another video, but for now, I'd like to review a few training philosophies here at Functional Bodybuilding that can have a potent impact on long-term success. Number one, always emphasize full range of motion. Charles Polican was famous for quoting, strength is gained in the range that it is trained. It is okay to train the mid-range strength of a muscle frequently. That's where we're gonna be strongest and where we can lift the biggest weights. That might be advantageous to get a strong stimulus for muscle growth and metabolic activity in the body. But don't neglect also training end range of motion too. You have to make sure that those end ranges are strong so that you remain mobile and resilient to life and training injuries. Number two philosophy point, use strength balance principles. What does that mean? The front and the back of your joints both need equal love. If you train to press five days a week and then you train pull one day a week, then the math is leading you towards a problem. This imbalance will surface soon enough as an injury or a plateau. So start making sure that you're balancing your major movement patterns as well as your joints weekly and in every training cycle that you do. Push and pull, squat and hinge, external and internally rotate, and flex and extend. Philosophy point number three, work your unilateral strength. Each of us have underlying imbalances in our body that are the result of a chaotic life. You won't know what they are until you start to explore training one side of your body at a time. Start immediately, including more unilateral work in your strength training. Philosophy point number four, stop neglecting your cardio and your work capacity. I see far too often that fitness coaches are encouraging people to do less cardio in order to grow muscle. Cardio is gonna ruin your gains. In my opinion, this advice sucks. I get the origins, Someone doing countless hours on the treadmill can't figure out why they're not gaining muscle. Well, it's hard to consume enough calories to get the, that person into an adequate surplus that they need to build muscle mass. So a coach says, cut back on their cardio and magically they build some muscle. 
The problem is that most people out there are not overdoing their cardio. In fact, most people don't do enough in my opinion. So what happens instead is you have a group of inactive people being told that the only way to get into shape is to lift weights and not do cardio. I'll repeat myself, this advice sucks. You should be doing both. Just make sure that you're doing it thoughtfully so that you can still grow muscle. With better work capacity slash cardio, you'll be able to push yourself harder in the gym, recover faster, utilize the energy that you eat far better, and have greater flexibility with your diet than without it. Okay, to drive these points home, I'm going to show you a 30 minute workout from start to finish that incorporates these FBB philosophies. Today's functional muscle training format is called aerobic movement redundancy. You'll be performing a 20 minute work capacity session with four exercises in a circuit and all of them are going to tax similar muscle groups and movement patterns. And since today is back day, we are going to hammer the back. After those 20 minutes are up, we will wrap up with some strength balance work to ensure that we keep our shoulders healthy and ready to come back and train hard again later in the week. Remember, consistency and effort, consistency and effort, are both key ingredients to long-term success. So let me review the workout from start to finish and then I'll break down some of the why behind the workout choices that I made. In this first section, you'll be completing, like I said, a 20 minute work capacity set. This is continuous movement and you should be moving at a 75 to 85% effort of your maximal capacity. You'll begin with five strict pull-ups. I'm performing them weighted, and the goal is to find a challenging weight or body weight for five reps. I'm also performing them with omni grip, meaning I'm changing my grip width every single set. After the five pull-ups, you'll move directly into 10 gorilla rows. These are supposed to be heavy and you're gonna only perform five per arm, 10 total reps. Following your gorilla rows, get on to the rowing machine. You'll perform 15 calories for men, 12 calories for women. After you get off your rowing machine, you're gonna perform 20 banded pull-aparts. These can be done with palms up or with palms down. At the conclusion of your band pull-aparts, it's back to the pull-up bar for another set of five strict pull-ups. You'll continue this order and this cycle for a full 20 minutes. The goal is to complete as much work as you can in the 20 minutes while maintaining that 75 to 85% effort zone and keeping the quality of your movement and range of motion of highest quality. At the conclusion of your 20 minutes, we're gonna move on to our finisher. You'll need about one to two minutes to recover and then we're diving right into a shoulder and scapular health finisher superset. There's two movements that you're gonna perform back to back, and you'll perform two sets of each to failure. You're gonna take a light weight and perform dumbbell external rotation, slow and controlled on each arm. Then find a band or a cable machine and perform throat pulls, where you pull the cable to your throat at a light or moderate weight Again, slow and controlled till you reach failure. Now let me review some of the why behind these exercise and movement selection choices. Work capacity. Well, unlike other work capacity or conditioning workouts in the 20 minute range, the value of doing movement redundancy like this is that it will indirectly control your pace. Look good, move well philosophy point number four says that we need to value capacity and cardio. This format brings cardio into the muscle building training format without making it the star. Your pace will be controlled by the muscle fatigue that you will experience. Furthermore, the transition between the various movements is also going to help control your heart rate and keep it in check. I really like leveraging some metabolic fatigue and stress in muscle building workouts. See, having years of CrossFit experience has taught me that some metabolic stress can be a powerful stimulus for muscle growth. So long as it isn't so much metabolic stress that your movement quality suffers and you start to get sloppy with your reps, 
it can be highly valuable in a muscle building format like this. This training format is also about equal time split on the cardio tool and the resistance training movements. Therefore, it isn't too heavily biased on one or the other. Throughout this session today for 30 minutes, we are focusing a lot on full range of motion. Pull-ups, we're going all the way to full lockout at the bottom and we're trying to get our chin well over the bar with each rep, sometimes even getting the chest as close to the pull-up bar as possible. On the gorilla rows, there is a bit of rotation happening on each and every rep. This is to ensure that we're getting a full contraction of the lat and the shoulder on each rep. And lastly, in our strength balance superset, we're doing cable throat pulls and dumbbell external rotation to a very full range of motion to work on bulletproofing these joints and making them more resilient for future training and longevity. How about unilateral strength? Well, we're covering this in the work capacity portion by incorporating gorilla rows. Furthermore, we covered this in the finisher with scap and shoulder work using dumbbell external rotations, which are a unilateral exercise. And of course, strength balance principles are at play here throughout this workout. Making sure that a joint is trained in all planes and all directions. We've got vertical pulling with pull-ups, we've got horizontal pulling, and we've got straight and bent arm pulling happening all in the same training session. Not to mention that pulling like a pull-up is a powerful internal rotator of the humerus and we're doing an external rotation exercise in our strength balance finisher. Hey, I hope that breakdown of the workout and the training format was useful for you to see. I don't explain all this stuff to flex knowledge or to make it seem like it's more than it actually is. I just want you to recognize that there's a lot of thoughtfulness and intention that goes into the functional bodybuilding training design. Look, at the end of the day, I want you to be able to show up and give full effort in your workouts and trust that somebody, and in this case me, is checking the box on what recipe needs to be in place for you to do this consistently. See, the recipe for long-term success in fitness is pretty simple. Come and give effort, do it consistently over time, follow these philosophies from functional bodybuilding, and you can do that too. I believe deeply that the look good, move well philosophy is perhaps the most effective way to accomplish this because we constantly look at our training through the lens of, will this allow me to keep giving effort for the long term? As opposed to, will this get me results fast? I believe we will have far more success with our athletes if we follow that path rather than the quick results path that so many of you have fallen victim to. No amount of results that you used to have will ever feel as good as the results that you have today. So if you want more lessons on how to look good and move well for life, then please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Drop me a like and a comment so that we can push this message to more and more people. I greatly appreciate your time, your attention. Now get in the gym and go give some effort. I'll see you next time.